one of the most important conversations that I have with patients, because I get the similar questions often, which is things like, is running bad for me? Is, it, is this activity good for my knee or bad for my knee? Because you read a different report in the yep. news all the time. Running's good, running's bad. Um, the truth is, we, we kind of know the answer to this in general. That is, no activity is horrible for cartilage. If I put your leg in a cast and we then look at your cartilage in a couple weeks, the content of that matrix is going to be significantly depressed. Right. Nothing's worse for you than inactivity. Right. But it's, a, it's an inverted U-shaped curve, right? But it's not symmetric. It's like that, where more and more and more activity, probably better and better and better, but then you can go too far and it falls off. But right. it's, not, it's not a perfect U where it's pure right. Goldilocks, where you want to be right in the middle of doing nothing and doing a lot. Because we'll never know because, we do, because it's dependent on a particular individual and so many factors. So we know that chondrocytes respond to activity. They feel the stress and they make more matrix. They make all of the proteins within cartilage. So a, a chondrocyte that's being pressured is happy. A chondrocyte that's not being pressured isn't going to do anything. And eventually it's going to break down. And biomechanics have to matter here. They do. In other words, you know, you, you watch an Ethiopian runner, you, you know, you watch Kipchoge running a marathon and you realize, okay, clearly there's a lot of force there based on his velocity. For him to have the stride length that he has, he is hitting that ground so hard and that ground is hitting him back so hard and that's what's allowing him to stay in the air long enough to travel the distance right. he travels. And sure, he's not the heaviest guy in the world. He probably weighs a buck 20 soaking wet. But again, if he's feeling eight times that, we're close to a thousand pounds right. every time. But his mechanics are perfect. It's, I think it's all mechanics. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's exaggeration, but it's mostly mechanics. You, if you have good mechanical alignment, we call it, that is if we draw a line from the center of your hip to the center of your ankle, and we do this regularly, and it goes right through the center of the knee, there's a good chance you're gonna be okay. Center of hip, meaning where the femoral head meets the acetabulum. Right, the center of the ball. Center of the ball drops, you should be able to drop a plumb line Correct. that goes, that cuts the patellar tendon and the patellar bone in half. Correct. And should land where on the foot, where in the ankle? You draw the line from the center and you connect the center of the ankle. To the center of the ankle. And, and then you the see where it goes through the knee. I got it. Interesting. If you go dead center, there's a good chance you're going to be okay. Sometimes even if you have other problems. Yeah. Um, the, the, if you are off to one side or the other, and that's where we have people who have knock knee or bow legged knees, there is an increased amount of force through one of those compartments of the knee and you are at high risk for degeneration. And then if you get a meniscus tear on top of that and you lose that, that's that surface area of force diffusion, you're gonna, that chondrocyte is no longer going to be happy. Thank you.